Hello and welcome uh, to this uh, presentation. We're going to be talking about uh, a little bit of controversial topic uh, and uh, can be confusing to a patient since I posted that video about uh, varicose embolization. Some people uh, and some patients don't know the difference between uh, percutaneous embolization performed by interventional radiology and um, classical surgery. So um, I wanted to make a uh, little bit this video, look at the uh, published literature to kind of differentiate and compare between the two techniques. So what is varicocele? Varicocele is basically, as we defined it earlier, is uh, dilatation and reflux of blood within the spermatic vein leading to a whole range of symptoms. So they affect about 10 to 15% of all men, mostly sim asymptomatic, but many are associated with infertility. Among infertile couples, the inc incidence of varicocele increased to 30 to 40 percent. Varicocele most commonly occur on the left side, the engorgement of the left pampiniform plexus and the venous collaterals in the scrotum will lead to elevated scrotal temperature, pressure causing hypoxia, oxidative stress and lower testosterone concentration in the testes. The diagnosis is fairly easy. Uh, clinically, it gives the sensation of bag of worms and they are graded from grade one to grade three according to the severity uh, of the manifestation of these uh, venous reflux and varicocele. Ultrasound is uh, very useful with color flow and Doppler to diagnose the reflux as seen with the uh, color Doppler imaging. So what are the repair techniques? Basically there are two main techniques that seem to be equivalent. The first one is performed by interventional radiologists. Interventional radiologists are a different specialty from uh, surgery. They are uh, physician trained in various techniques. They use high quality level of imaging to perform uh, procedures without the need of surgery. Everything is through the through a needle st stick in the skin. And in the case of varicocele, uh, we use different uh, type of embolic material. The most frequently used are coils. Sometimes we use microcores. Microcores are, are smaller and less uh, irritating to the vein. They are usually delivered through a um, through a microcatheter, through this very tiny catheter. You have the technique of sclerotherapy, which is the local injection of uh, sclerosing agent that will cause the vein to shrink. These techniques can be also uh, combined for better treatment. So. Here you see a coil has been placed. You can add on top of it uh, either glue or sclerotherapy. Glue uh, is mainly done in countries where it's uh, cheaper and can achieve a, an occlusion of the vein. The other uh, main modality to repair varicocele is surgery. There are again various techniques. I'm not a surgeon, so essentially uh, surgery consists in opening and ligating uh, those uh, dysfunctional vein. The challenge for the surgeon, of course, is to ligate the vein, but should not ligate the artery, otherwise you may lose your testicle. It should not ligate the spermatic cord, of course. It should not ligate also the lymphatic vessel. When they do, you have hydrocele, which is accumulation of fluid inside the testicle. Um, so this is, in a nutshell, various uh, techniques. I uh, think the um, most sophisticated use a microscope and uh, it's also a very efficient uh, approach. Now let's look at some uh, of the uh, published literature and uh, papers. So I just selected a few, of course you cannot uh, review all of them. The first one came from Germany. He published in uh, a journal called European Radiology in 2015. The title says a treatment of male varicocele by transcatheter polydocanol foam, evaluation of clinical success, complication, patient satisfaction with regards to alternative technique. So the authors took 141 patients that had 146 varicocele. The mean age was 29 years old. Technical success rate was 90. 1.8% clinical success rate 83.9% the recurrence rate was low around 16% 81.9% of the patients were absolutely satisfied with the outcome about 95% of the case uh, they had resolution of symptoms of pain and discomfort 97% of the case the aesthetic issues were no longer a problem 
63% of patients achieved pregnancy, 50% of patients who had pre-procedural testicular atrophy had a catch-up growth uh, on the follow-up. So in conclusion, the author said the treatment of male varicocele via transcatheter polydocanal foam injection, this is sclerotherapy, is safe, effective procedure, easily feasible in outpatient setting with high clinical and technical success rate, shows high rate of patient satisfaction and septum resolution, considerable catch-up growth, and peg the, the catch-up growth of the testicle, and pregnancy achievement, surgery-related complications such, such as testicular necrosis, this is when the surgeon inadvertently clipped the artery, or hydrocele formation. Hydrocele is basically a uh, formation of uh, fluid around the testicle. Uh, it can be uh, very difficult to get rid of. This happens when they ligate the lymphatic vessels. So these two complications did not occur in any case with sclerotherapy. Moreover, there's no need for general anesthesia, making sclerotherapy a quick, comfortable outpatient treatment. Let's look at another study, Journal of Pediatric Urology. Uh, this study came from the United States. They looked at the initial experience with percutaneous selective embolization, a truly minimally invasive treatment of the adolescent varicocele with no risk of hydrocele. Again, uh, the others are stressing that there's no risk of hydrocele. So they took 27 patients, mean age of 16 years old, indication was pain, varicocele size, and persistent testicular asymmetry. So the varicocele resolved in 91% uh, of the patient. There was no hydrocele. The pain resolved in all patients. There were two technical failures. In conclusion, the authors concluded that percutaneous embolization and sclerotherapy represent a truly minimally invasive treatment, low morbidity, minimal pain, rapid recovery. In our early experience, since lymphatic channels are completely avoided, there appears to be no risk of hydrocele formation. What about this study in radiology that came from Italy, 2008? They looked at um, the treatment with another sclerosing agent called STS. They treated 244 patients with a mean age of 22 8 years old, 280 varicocele, high technical success rate, 97%. Resolution of pain was seen in most cases, 96.5%. And there was improvement of all semen parameters with achieved in infertile patient after treatment. <coughs> Among those who had uh, problems in their semen, 39% achieved pregnancy. Recurrence was only seen in eight patients from the 280 varicocele, only eight patients. So in conclusion, uh, foam sclerotherapy in male varicocele was associated with a low recurrence rate, high rate of pain resolution, significant improvement of pretreatment sperm parameter alteration, substantial increase in pregnancy achievement, uh, was obtained for patients who had pretreatment sperm alteration. And finally, this paper, uh, I think from a Portuguese team in 2017, they looked at um, the ex their experience in varicocele embolization with glue and coil. Single center experience, 129 patients, 26 using glue, majority, 80% were coil, indication infertility, about 69%, and testicular pain in 31%. The technical success rate was 100%. Clinical success rate um, was a little bit less uh, in glue versus coil, or higher in the coil component, 88%. Recurrence rate was 11% in glue and 5% with coil. And the procedure time was shorter with glue. So they concluded that both glue and coils are safe and effective. However, the use of glue yields shorter procedure time. Okay, so uh, we saw that the... Uh, publication and experience, international experience, various teams from Europe and the United States are in favor for embolization. So what about studies looking at embolization versus surgery? There's not real um, high quality data, but uh, only retrospective studies. Um, so let's take a look at them. So IR versus surgery. IR is basically, like I said before, Interventionalists are initially trained in radiology, so they they are very sophisticated and uh, professional in looking at imaging and of the whole body. In addition, there's another training on top of that. Uh, they use techniques to use basically imaging to treat inside the body, so there's no need to open up the body since X-ray allows us to see inside. Surgery is uh, is classical surgery. Everybody knows what a surgeon he has to operate. Uh, highly specialized, highly um, 
technically uh, skill demanding uh, specialty. So let's look at some publication here in uh, General Vascular Comparative Study. They looked at Bracteneus uh, treatment of varicocele with microcoil comparison with laparoscopic variselectomy. So they did uh, a surgery in 43 patients versus coil embolization in 41 patients. Um, they followed uh, during five years. The technical success rate was um, a little bit higher in the interventional group, 100% versus surgery. The mean operative time in this uh, was a little bit higher in the IR group than the surgical group, 52 minutes, but did not was not statistically significant. The recurrence rate again was higher in the IR group, but two cases in surgery, one cases, 2.3%. Complications, however, were more seen in the surgical group, 16.3 versus 9.7 in the interventional group. Uh, the authors concluded that both laparoscopic variselectomy and coil embolization are effective uh, modalities in varicocele with lower treatment complication rates in the interventional group. So there are less complications. Uh, coil embolization of the testicular vein offer treatment advantage compared with laparoscopic repair in patients. So 1.4 IR. Let's look at another study. This is a recent study came out of China, 2020. Uh, analysis of internal spermatic vein embolization through catheter versus laparoscopic high ligation. So they took 69 varicocele patients. Uh, 26 had an sclerotherapy and 43 patients underwent surgery. Followed them up for 12 months. Okay, recurrence rate, IR zero surgery, 4.7% recurrence rate. Operative time, shorter time for IR, 31 minutes versus 50 minutes. Hospitalization post-procedure, uh, on average IR one day in surgery four days. The cost cheaper for interventional radiology versus surgery. Complication IR much better, 19% than surgery. Uh, so the author concluded that patient who underwent sclerotherapy showed a higher technical success rate, lower recurrence rate, fewer complications, shorter hospitalization time compared to those treated with laparoscopic ligation. So transcatheter sclerosinasion may be a preferable treatment option for patient with unilateral varicocele. Okay, two points for IR. Let's see another study, Andrologia. So this study, basically, it's not a comparison, but it just to answer a question of some of the audience here, if uh, it showed, this study showed that if you treat early those young men um, that are a teenager or still undergoing uh, the growth of their testicles, if you treat them early uh, with scleroembolization, uh, there is correction of their sperm for formation in terms of sperm count, sperm morphology, uh, and also testicular growth. So there's clearly an indication that those patients needs to be treated. Okay, so we saw in this brief uh, um, comparison that IR has clearly some um, benefits in addition of the fact that it's not surgical. So the outcome seems to be better, less complication rate, less recurrence. So what should you choose? You know, uh, ultimately when patients are given a choice, it's their choice. We are just here to educate patients who are not against or for a particular um, technique. However, when the vast majority of patients are not being presented with the option of embolization, I have a problem with that. So this brings into discussion the concept of uh, informed consent. You are only signing an informed consent if you have been presented with all the options and then you choose. So in order to empower the patient, um, we present those techniques and uh, speak about the difference about IR versus surgical. Both techniques are equivalent in terms of efficacy and they are both uh, performed by highly skilled professional that will do the best to get you an excellent outcome. Interventional radiology, like any other interventional procedure, has the advantage of being uh, less invasive. Specifically in the case of varicocele, it shows that not only it has similar high efficient results that are comparable to surgery, but in addition to that, it has less recovery, less risk, less complication that we discussed above. So, uh, we'll... Uh, 
finish up this presentation by the final words from an author talking about this topic.